Gonna get an angle on the wood here. Uh, we're gonna play with our scaling a little bit. I think that looks a bit more natural. Just gonna expand my basic and advanced parameters. The wood roughness here is the one that will affect how glossy the wood is, and that's okay, that should be fine. Remember, this is an undercoat, it, you don't want it too glossy because it's not going to be, it's the wood underneath of the wood on top. So, that should be okay. Now, now that we've got that down, let's throw down a um, cherry wood here. And for this one, I'm just going to Pull back a little bit on my uh, roughness value. I'm also going to pull back on my height position and my height range. I don't want it quite so high. I'm going to change the color of the wood because remember we want it to be more of a red. So. But not quite that dark. Again, I'm, I'm going to quickly jump into um, the Unreal Engine here and compare it to the wood that we've already got. We want to try and make all of our assets here look consistent, so... We want to try and match this red colour as much as we can. We may take out a little bit more of the red. We can always make an adjustment after the fact once we take it into Unreal if it looks uh, like the red color is incorrect. And we can check it in Max as well. So, all right, we have our cherry wood laid down. Uh, Sniper Girl 85. Hello, thanks for popping into chat and saying hello. Again, uh, we're working on our Art Deco building interior and exterior that we're going to be taking into Unreal. We're just texturing up some of the assets now in Substance Painter that are left to do. We've already we've, we've taken a few of them into Unreal already. Um, we've just got a few left that we have to well, we have to bring into Unreal before we start to bring in the actual building. And again, these um these ones here, like the skate section, we've set that up as a blueprint so we can easily. Uh, add it to the building once we start building it up. So yes, we are working on our Art Deco building. Um, we're working on this asset here at the moment, so we'll finish doing this. So we've added our cherry wood here to the top. I'm going to add a, um, a white mask. Jump into my brushes here. I'll grab the dirt texture. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Let's um, reduce the size of that texture a bit. I'm just going to jump back in and turn off my height information quickly there. Uh, Sniper Girl is asking, have you thought about opening up one of the old assets you textured in Substance Painter and making the wood material a smart material so that you can easily use it on an object, on any object that you want, need? No, actually it's a, a good point. I'll have to look into doing that, Sniper Girl. Uh, but a smart material won't allow me to... Um, <laughs> it, it'll solve the problem with the colour, like the red colour to make sure that matches. So that, that's a, 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 a good suggestion, actually. But it, I'd still need to take it into substance so I can paint in all of this uh, weathering detail that I'm doing now. I'm ju I've just grabbed my um, Wacom tablet here. 
Uh, all I'm doing here is painting in a little bit of wearing along the edge. So, but no, you're right. That's a good point, actually. Using a smart material to actually keep a consistent color look between the different um, pieces of uh, wood is a good idea. Thank you for that suggestion. Uh, again, Substance Painter is generally not my go-to software for 3D painting. I generally like to prefer to use um, Mari because I like all of this hand painting stuff and I, I can do much more of that in Mari than I can in Substance. Substance is good for physically based materials though, like wood or stone or brick or that type of thing. Um, and, and it's it, it's a great program for what it is, what it does. But yeah, my, my preferred program is actually to go and to use Mari. Now, I'm not going to run um, uh, I don't know what for Vault, sorry for Nightbot doing that to you, it's just you're typing all in caps and Nightbot has a rule against that <laughs> no that's that's cool dude that's fine yeah, just, Nightbot can be can be a bit strict sometimes uh, how much do these programs cost? If you're talking about Substance Painter, you can get an indie license from Algorithmic and I think it's about $100. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's around about that. For an indie, if you're an indie developer, that's not a studio license, that's an indie license. Uh, so you can get it from Substance, from Algorithmic's website. Um, and I have a feeling it's around about $100. I think it was $99 last time I looked, I think. But Mari, Mari is actually very expensive because it's used in, in film work. Let's talk about the difference just quickly between Substance Painter and Mari. Substance Painter, you can only do texture sizes up to 8K. And that's only a new thing that they've added in, in the new version of Substance Painter. Uh, Mari, you can do texture sizes that are huge, 64K. And, and, and people that do film work need really large texture sizes but Mari is a very expensive program to buy. They do give away a free version that you can use um, from their website. So if you go to the Foundry's website, you can download Mari for free and use it, so long as you're not using it for a commercial purpose. Um, so you give that a go for free. I'm just gonna quickly read through what's going on here. Um, uh, and Sniper Girl is saying it's pretty simple to do. Make a folder, drag all the layers in, uh, the layers for the wood into the folder, and right-click, create. Oh, thank you for that, Sniper Girl. I will look at that um, after the stream here. After I've done this um, piece, I will certainly do that. So that's that's a great tip. Thank you very much, Sniper Girl. Saying to make the smart material, and you just um, create a folder, drag all the layers for the wood that we're using here into that folder. Uh, right click and called create uh, and right click and create smart material. Uh, Sniper Girl saying you're right regarding the hand painted details, though you would still need to do that by hand, yeah. But that's a very good way to make sure that we get our colors correct between the different um, assets so that we have our cherry wood color the same because remember we changed that by hand here. So no, no, that's a very good tip, Sniper Girl. Thank you for that. But yeah, as, as we're saying, is you're still going to have to go in and paint these um, details in by hand anyway. Oh, Sniper Girl saying she thinks it's 150. Well, I could be wrong too. You, you're probably more right than I am. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a, it, but you can get an indie license from Algorithmic or Substance Painter. I'm not sure if that includes any other software or not because they have um, Substance... Is it called Director? I can't remember. No, you, you, you may be right, Sniper Girl. It, it was either, it used to be 99, I thought. They may have been increased it to 149. Um, so you, you may be right. And, uh, oh, so for Bolt saying he's not looking to use it for commercial purposes, just a student looking for it to expand then by all means, go to the Foundry's website. Now, I'm, I'm just going to, and for any, again, anyone new to me, 
you go to phildoes3d.com, you can read up about me and what I've done and who I am and look at some of my past work and all that sort of stuff. But if anyone is interested in using Mari to do their 3D painting, um, and again, Mari is this software here, you just go to Mari by the Foundry. You type that into Google, you'll, they'll, they'll come up as the first um, link here. So it's M-A-R-I, the Foundry. I'll just leave that there for a couple of secs. Um, you can go to their website and they give away a version of Mari, which is completely free, fully functional. There are no restrictions on it. It's exactly like the commercial software they sell. Um, and they allow you to use it so long as you don't use it for commercial purposes. So if you're a student, as uh, for Vault is, you can download the free version. I don't, I don't think it's the free trial. There's another link here somewhere, which is an independent version. You'll have to go through their website to look for it completely. But somewhere here, there is a link for um, to download the in, in, in indie license or independent license, I think they call it. Download and install that. It's completely fully functional. Um, same as the retail product. It's used in a lot of film, as you see here. A lot of different film studios have used it over the years. And it's and for that specific reason that you can create really high resolution textures which is what they're doing with this little uh, dragon here. Uh, and it's meant more for film and cinema work, but you can still use it for games development as well. Whereas Substance Painter is really meant for games development. You, you don't use it for film work because the texture sizes aren't high enough. 8K is, is too small for film because they'll generally work in 16, 32, 64K textures. So. So yeah, do do though, check out Mari because it's a great 3D painting program. It may take you a little while just to get used to their interface. I mean, I like their interface. It's very clean, easy to use, uncluttered, um, but very powerful. But different to Substance Painter as well. Substance Painter's interface is um, quite unique. Well, it, it's still laid out well, but it can be a bit, I don't know. I, I don't like these sliders that they use a lot. I know a lot of people like sliders to to change values, but I prefer, and I know you can type the number in, I prefer doing it that way to get more fine control. Um, but just a few things like their, their um, 0 to 1 seems to be sw switched around from other programs. So instead of going 0 to 1, they, they, they look like they go 1 to 0. It's a bit confusing, but yeah. And it's good for physically based materials, Substance Painter. Uh, the other program is Substance Designer, but I don't generally use Substance Designer. That's so you can make your own, um, if you wanted to, to make your own materials, like you see down here in the shelf, you'd use Substance Designer. But I generally don't go into that side of things. So, And th they offer a database substance algorithmic of their materials that you can download from their website. So you'll usually find something that you can use. You don't have to make your own. But if you do, Substance Designer is the program to use. But this is Substance Painter. Um, I'm just... <laughs> I don't, didn't want to do that. <gasps> okay. I forgot to hold down the Alt key when I was trying to do my rotation here. Now, we're not going to see these corners at all. They're hidden uh, actually inside of the um, the columns on the end. A sniper girl saying she doesn't like sliders either. Yeah, no, I, I hate them. You just don't get enough control with a slider. You know, I like to type a number in. And they do give you the option of both. I'm not, you know, I'm not ragging on Substance Painter. It's a great program, but... And you do have the option of typing a number in too, so that's okay. It's just that I found that their 0 to 1 seems to be backwards. And it's... Yeah. Uh, it's different. Like, yeah, it's backwards, basically. It's flipped around the other way from the way most programs do it. Maybe it's because I think they're French, aren't they? It's algorithmic. They're a French company. Maybe that's the reason. And I am not dissing French people. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not dissing anyone. But the, yeah, the zero to one seems to be flipped around, and that can be a bit confusing sometimes. Now I'm just going along here and, and adding a little bit of weathering just to the edges here and there. I don't want to do it all the way along the um, like for, for the entire edge. 
I do want to miss a couple of spots here and there just to make it look a bit more natural. Uh, and now, again, you don't have to use the Wacom tablet to do this. Using the mouse is quite fine as well. So don't feel that you need to buy a Wacom tablet to do this sort of stuff. I know Wacom tablets can be a bit expensive. And as long as you're careful, you can use a mouse. And in fact, I'm using the mouse right now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to doing that so that I can sh to show you that as long as you're careful, you can still use a mouse. The Wacom tablet though is good. It'll just give you a bit more finer control. Now, at this stage, I'm only worrying about the very edges. Once we do the edge wear, we'll add a, an overall uh, wear to the um, wood as well. But we'll do that through a generator in Substance Painter. And, and again, I'm not going to be adding the, these, this wearing right into the very corners. So I'm not going to go all the way down here because the, these corners are covered by the uh, columns on the end. So you're just going to be adding detail that's never going to be seen. Same at the very end. The ends of these columns are actually going to be intersecting the wall. Okay, let's swing around to the opposite side. And like I said, you can hear my mouse clicking in the background. That's just me using the mouse instead of using the Wacom tablet. But like, a, if you can um, afford to buy a Wacom tablet or any any tablet really, Wacom uh, are the, you have been around for years and uh, are used a lot in design studios. Simply because they have been around so long, a lot of design studios you will use a Wacom tablet. But there are other tablet manufacturers around, and you don't need to buy a Wacom. But the sooner you get used to using a tablet, the better, because um, they are used in studios a lot and it can take a little while to get used to using one, particularly if you're used to using a mouse. Okay, that should be good enough. We just wanted to add a little bit of wear here and there along the edge. So now let's add a generator. So add generator. We're going to choose the dirt generator here. I'm going to turn off the hide information. Now we can start playing with our dirt levels until we get something we like to look of. and our grunge amount as well as our grunge scale you see that making small adjustments here with this um, slide it can make quite large changes to the actual texture itself
Now I'm just playing with my blending style here as well. The blending style of the actual generator, not of the uh, texture. Zoom in a bit here. Yeah, I'm actually not going for a grunge look. Um, it's, uh, Sniper Girl is saying that for something like grunge, you should uh, have Substance Painter bake out the texture before you add the grunge. That's very true, but the, the look I'm going for is actually not a grunge. It's um, more weathering. I'm using the dirt texture to try and add a weathering effect to it. I've just got to... <laughs> the problem is it's been... <clears throat> about a week and a half or two weeks since I played with these models so I can't remember exactly what I set it to to get the effect that I want <clears throat> what I mean is um, we go back into Unreal here and we jump back to this model piece <clears throat> I'm, I'm going more for this weathering look as opposed to uh, as opposed to a grunge look yeah from the, on the top there you see that that weathering that aged wood look um, I'm looking for more of that as opposed to a grunge dirt look. And that's what I'm trying to uh, get done again here. But I, like I said, I can't for the life of me remember how which um, setting I used to do that. I know it's one of these. I'm just going to pull back on the actual um, amount as well. I know I did that. Come on, which one was it? It's not the effect I'm after. I hate it when I forget how I've done something, I really do. Sniper Girl saying I still should bake world space, normals, ambient occlusion, curvature, position and thickness. You're talking about these? Yeah. You're probably right. But it, it's going to give us the effect we're after. If I can remember how I did it, that's that's <laughs> that's the problem here. You know what, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save this project.
Yeah, I, I understand. Uh, Sniper Girl's saying, when you buy, let me just say this project and we'll talk through that. Um, UE4 projects, models, Art Deco, exports, uh, Mezrail, and we'll call it Mezrail. Okay, now Sniper, uh, uh, Sn Sniper Girl is saying, um, baking these out, when you add a generator to an object like this, a generator generally works with a curvature, ambient occlusion, well space, all of that type of thing. Yeah. So that, that's the main reason that you're using a generator. And when you render out these maps, what it does is, as, as Sniper Girl is saying, it takes into account the curvature and the position on the model to actually calculate um, where it's going to add whatever effect it's adding. Uh, and and that, that's that's true. That's that's the reason that you generally add a generator. A generator is usually added to, like edge wearing and things like that, can be done with a generator. And instead of me going in there and doing it by hand, I can use a generator to actually do all of that automatically. In order to do that, though, I have to have a curvature map. And in order to have a curvature map, I have to um, have a high and low res mesh that I render a bake out here in Bake Textures in Substance Painter. Now I'm not creating a high res mesh of this piece of geometry, um, but in order to take advantage of a generator really, you take your low res piece of geometry in like we have here, you also import your high res piece of geometry and you get it to bake out a curvature map. The curvature map is then used in the generator to calculate where it should place that uh, detail. So Sniper Girl is saying, and she's saying, and that, what she's saying is correct. Having these uh, curvature, ambient occlusion, world space and position set up in the generator is, is the way it's meant to work. I'm just using a dirt generator though to add some um, general in detailing to the actual piece of wood. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm going to open up one of the projects we've already worked on because I can't remember how I did it. Again, I hate going away from a project for a little while. I always forget what I've done, how I've done it. So if I jump back into... Where are we? Wooden box, wooden panel deco... Square banister, square rail... You're saying, no, I don't need a high-res mesh. You can, you can bake the curvature map and such without doing a high-res mesh. Okay. Well, again, that's new to me. I'm just trying to find, um, before we look at that, I, I want to try and find the section that I've already done. Um, No, it's not that one. I think it might have been square banister. what I'm looking for. So what have we got going on here? So it looks like we've got uh, Fifty-nine. 
I did use a darkened, so that's what I thought I'd used. Alright, let's jump back into the project we were just working on. I may have added the generator to the wrong part. I should have added it to the mask. All right. Let's pull back here on our value a bit and start playing with our, um, our settings. Now, again, you see what I'm... I know what you're saying, Sniper Girl, about using our generators but I'm only going for like a, an age look to the wood and I can affect that just by do by playing with our um, basic parameters here without the need to create uh, any of these other maps and now that may affect the normal mapping. We'll see. Just going to pull back a bit on the grunge amount. I'm just pulling up a bit on my dirt level. And the dirt level is the one that's making it look aged. It's it, it's adding that um, weathered look to it, to the overall look to the wood. I just don't want to pull too much in, otherwise it's going to look fake. What I want to do here too is I want to jump into the wood color that's underneath and I'm going to pull that back. This is a bit too yellow, a bit too bright. I'm also going to pull back on the um, on the roughness value here, which is the reflection. All right. Why is my reflection not being changed?
I do remember we pulled back a little on the contrast on the other pieces as well. Well, okay, we may leave it there for today, guys. I actually want to look uh, into this a bit more, but uh, we'll I'll have to leave it there for now. We'll come back to this again tomorrow, though. Um, I'll be back on again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the U.S. Um, remember, I always post 15 minutes before I go live to my Twitter page, at does 3 d I'll refresh my memory on all this again tonight and uh, we'll come back and pick up where we left off with this piece of uh, geometry tomorrow. I do want to thank you guys for hanging out and for watching and popping into chat. Uh, thank you for Sniper Girl and for Vault and uh, Sniper Echo and everyone else that popped in and said hi. Um, yeah, we'll pick up on this tomorrow at 5pm Pacific time. <laughs> for Vault says right after Champions League, cool. Uh, I do want to thank you guys, like I said, again, for watching and for hanging out with me. I will be back on again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the U.S. Um, if you're not sure, keep an eye on my Twitter page at PhilDoes3D because I always post 15 minutes to my Twitter page before I go live. Um, I hope you guys have a good day, night, wherever it is, whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys again tomorrow. See you guys.